Please welcome former Chief of Staff of the CIA and the Department of Defense, Jeremy Bash. Hello, everybody. It's great to be at my 29th APAC Policy Conference. Thank you for joining us here at our showcase session. Today, we're going to hear from many leaders on Capitol Hill, from both political parties, who directly impact the alliance between the United States and Israel. I want to again thank Matthew Rush for sharing his powerful story, and I want to thank all first responders who are joining us today for the work they do every day to keep Americans safe. Thank you very much. Now, Matthew's powerful example reminds us that our work is making a difference. It is so important that we continue to share these stories of how the U.S.-Israel relationship impacts our lives here in America. With that, I'd like to introduce our first two distinguished guests this afternoon, the chairman and ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee, Congressman Adam Smith and Congressman Mac Thornberry. As the former Chief of Staff for the Secretary of Defense, come on out, guys, I witnessed firsthand the strong defense cooperation between the United States and Israel. And these two leaders of the Armed Services Committee are absolutely key to that relationship. Please join me in welcoming Chairman Adam Smith and Mr. Mac Thornberry. Thank you for, both for, for being with us on a, on a historic day at the APAC Policy Conference. Chairman Smith, I want to begin with you. We saw the news this morning out of Israel. Uh, family members of mine spent their morning in a bomb shelter, having heard the alarms and hearing the explosions of a rocket attack in central Israel. I want to get your reactions first to the developments this morning in Israel and your broader perspective on the threats facing Israel at this moment. Well, it's just another reminder of, the, of how unstable the region is and the fact that people cannot live in peace in that region and of the work we need to do to change that. Um, there are constant rocket attacks in Israel, and then most people are not aware of that. Fortunately, I have some very able constituents who re remind me of that and keep me informed on those issues. But if you live in Israel, you live under threat. And that affects, I mean, imagine your own life. What if every day you wondered whether or not a rocket was coming your way? Um, it changes absolutely everything you do, and it's something we need to work together with Israel and try and stop. Ranking Member Thornberry? Well, I think for both of us, uh, we live in a world that is dangerous and where we are always being tested to see what our reaction is. Now, for Israel, it's a more immediate sort of threat than it is for us in the United States, and yet uh, we both face these, this kind of testing that is constantly going on uh, to see whether there's an opening and a vulnerability that uh, some folks could exploit. Now, turning to the issue of, of missile defense and Iron Dome, both of you have been strong proponents of equipping Israel with that capability. Mr. Thornberry, I'll start with you. How do you see the missile threat in the region, and what are some of the things that we should be focusing on? Well, the missile threat is clearly growing in the region, and it is growing in the world which makes our cooperative efforts even more important uh, than they have been in the past. I think it's a very significant step, by the way, that uh, in our bill a couple of years ago, we directed the Department of Defense to consider purchasing Iron Dome to defend U.S. troops in Europe. And now the Army is going to buy some of those batteries and see whether it can meet our needs. Now, not only are we working together to pay for and develop, but when we start buying things from one another and have that even added layer of mutual dependency, I think it enables us to take missile defense up to an even higher level. Let, that basically completely... Let me. Mr. Chairman? I completely agree with that. It's one of the, the great defense challenges of the world for all of us is the advance in missile technology. Very cheaply, you can threaten uh, just about anything with, with missile technology, and we need to develop uh, ways to um, thwart that attack, and Israel is a terrific partner. Um, regrettably, they have more experience than anybody in the world with uh, withstanding missile attacks and developing weapon systems to defeat them, so that partnership is crucial not just for Israel's security, but for ours as well. 
Mr. Chairman, Mr. Thornberry, one of the things that we marvel at is the way the Armed Services Committee has been a model of bipartisanship. At a time when there are a lot of divisions in Congress and partisan squabbles, you two gentlemen and the, the members that you lead have been able to pass a defense authorization bill year in, year out. And obviously the, the Congress changed hands this year. You were the chairman, now you're the chairman. Can you speak a little bit about the importance of bipartisanship, particularly as it relates, relates to national security? Uh, absolutely. We've passed the Defense Authorized Act in 59 straight years, I think it is? 58. 58, okay. Um, and no other bill in Congress comes close. I always say we, we are the most bipartisan committee in Congress, which is a very low bar to jump over. <laughs> um, but, and it, it starts with a couple things. One, leadership. You know, every chair and ranking member that I've had during my time uh, in Congress has prioritized working in a bipartisan way. Max certainly did when he was chair. Um, the committee works together on everything. And when you have that leadership, it sets the tone. And we're also very mindful of the fact that we've got something to do every year. We have to pass the National Defense Authorizing Act, which typically is you know, over $700 billion and 1,500, 2,000 pages, an incredibly important policy um, for providing for the men and women who fight to protect our country. So we know that we have that job to do and we will not get it done unless we work together. So the, the leadership has been outstanding during my time there and I, I hope to continue that. Mr. Thornberry, bipartisanship, is it alive and well in Congress? It is. Um, and, and we have an advantage of 58 straight years, which is kind of like history looking down on you, saying, okay, are you going to be the one that blows it? <laughs> and, and so momentum... Yes, I'm mindful of that this year, actually. So. <laughs> momentum is a good thing. But, but here, I, I agree with everything Adam said, but in addition to that, we know what the stakes are. We know that if we don't do our job, for example, there are men and women who serve in the military who could lose their lives. Uh, by not having the most up-to-date equipment, by not making sure their training is ready, that, that sort of thing. So it is literally uh, a matter of life and death that helps elevate it above kind of the partisan sort of I'll make a couple points on you sort of, sort of approach. And I don't think it's lost on anybody that it's, it's not just their lives, it's our way of life which uh, is, is affected by what we do. And so that, that helps lift us up maybe above uh, some of those other considerations. Uh, and, and it gives an added meaning to, to what we try to do. Mr. Thornberry, I want to turn to the issue of Iran and the threat that Iran poses to Israel, to US interests in the region. How do you, from the perspective of the Armed Services Committee, view the threat right now being posed by the regime in Tehran? Um, it's significant and it's growing. Uh, if you look at what has happened across uh, the Middle East in through, of course, now Syria into Lebanon, if you look at what Iran is doing in Yemen at a very low cost, but still very effectively pursuing their interests, if you look at some of the other things they're doing even more broadly around the world, then clearly they are of an expansionist mindset. So when it comes to our responsibility, the most important thing we can do is make sure we have military capability that is there and capable of pushing back against Iran. Obviously, missile defense is one key area. As Iran continues to pursue longer and longer range missiles, we've got to work with Israel especially in being able to defeat that, that uh, missile threat. But there's, there's a variety of kinds of threats they pose. The best antidote is a strong military. Mr. Chairman, as we wind up here, some final thoughts from you on the threats facing Israel in the region and what are U.S. national interests with respect to Israel's security? Well, the, the biggest re interest is frankly bringing peace and stability to a region that is anything but. As Mac pointed out, you've got Syria, you know, Lebanon long, long before that, um, you've got Yemen, Iraq, obviously. Um, we need to work in partnership with Israel and other countries in the region to try to reduce the violence and bring stability. The humanitarian crisis in Yemen, the humanitarian crisis in Syria um, is untold human suffering. And Israel is a key partner in that region to try to get to the point where we can reach a more peaceful arrangement. You know, we've also got to work with the Arab world. I mean, the conflict right now between Iran and the Arab world is, well, it's killing thousands of people. Uh, making thousands more homeless, and we've got to find some way to resolve that. Uh, the human suffering is, is far too great, and you know, we see it in Israel as your opening question. Uh, rockets being launched at them every day. 
Um, and fortunately, Israel is very good at defending itself, and usually these rockets um, don't hurt people, but as we saw just today, that's not always the case. So we have to work together to stop the violence. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the Armed Services Committee, Adam Smith of Washington State, the ranking member of the Armed Services Committee, Matt Thornberry of Texas, please join me in welcoming them and thanking them for sharing their time with us today. Thank you very much.